We have uh, Managing Director Lagarde coming over to us from, uh, from down there. Managing Director, thanks Hello. so much for being here. For, oh, great pleasure. We are live on Facebook. Uh, we've been here all week You've been taking your... All the time. I have been oh. talking. I know people are very happy to have you here, I think. Um, we've been running a poll talking about trust and corruption. Generally, our audience was pretty negative on their view of government. We've seen certainly trust is a big theme here when it comes to anti-globalization, potentially populist policies. Uh, how is that shaping this outlook that we're seeing today and, and what's your response? No, I think it, it reinforces our determination to really, number one, tell the truth as we see it. And sometimes uh, people don't like it, but I think the truth is critical in order to rebuild trust where it's lacking. Number two, be as transparent as we can, because it's when people don't know that they become suspicious. And it's when people are operating in the dark that they can do, you know, hunky punky businesses that is just not good and is characterized as corruption. So I think truth and transparency for me are the two key pillars of where we need to go and how we need to help because we are here to serve the countries uh, that have started this institution. Uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary Tim Mnuchin actually touched on that transparency issue, calling a bit on the IMF to help countries like China be more transparent on their trade and lending practices. What do you say to that? It's clearly a project that we have been working on, that we will continue to work on. And uh, I, I'm delighted that he's supporting us. Why is it important? Because our mission is financial stability around the world. If we don't know what the loans are around the world, if we don't know who is benefiting from those loans, if we don't know who is lending, if we have a vague idea about the maturity, the interest rates or the guarantees associated, with those loans, then how can we you know, have a view on stability? How can we provide support to those countries? Now, you know, it's one area where everybody has to participate because very often uh, one side of the transaction doesn't really know the whole extent of what the other side is. So we need to receive the information from the beneficiaries, but also from the lenders. And that's what we're doing and we are encouraged uh, to continue and to be as inquisitive as is needed in order to have a clear picture of those financial relationships. What's more, because the world is heavily indebted at the moment, we have about 164 trillion trillions of dollars out there in liabilities. Uh, this is the highest we have ever been at. And uh, when you look at the sovereigns, which is, you know, the nations, the countries, uh, they are at the highest they've ever been since the Second World War, when there was reconstruction, when there was investment going on. And the private sector is also heavily uh, in debt. So we need to really keep um, our finger on that pulse and make sure that we understand where the liabilities are. I was finance minister in 2007, 2008, the big crisis hit, the big recession. The problem with that moment is that we had very unclear idea about who was holding what. And the banks suddenly refused to lend to each other because they didn't know what was in the balance sheets of their colleagues across the transaction. We need to avoid that moment. Amid some of these tensions, is that transparency then maybe now more important than ever in some ways? When you talk about those levels of deterioration of trust, having the information, telling the truth, being transparent about it, and being willing to address it uh, in, in, in the, the field the IMF is operating in is critically important. So we'll continue doing that. I want to talk a little bit about digitalization because we were here for the digitalization panel. We had a lot of interest from our Facebook viewers, of course. And one question is, how can digitalization actually help curb corruption? Uh, is that something that the IMF is, is looking at? We're looking at digitalization for ourselves to improve our efficiency, number one, and we're looking at digitalization to see where it can help governments who are raising revenue and spending revenue. And there's no question that it does help. There are a few examples that are well known uh, where whenever you use suddenly digital payment mechanisms, uh, you realize that a lot of money suddenly surfaces, which was 
undisclosed, which was paid through intermediaries, which was navigating in troubled waters. So digital, to the extent that it cuts out the middleman, to the extent that it brings uh, money to the surface of the transaction, is extremely helpful. Uh, when governments use uh, digital extensively, they gain efficiency. Uh, the very famous example is Estonia, which is a very small country, but which is 100% digital, has probably the highest, one of the highest efficiency ratios uh, in the world. Now, I don't want to be um, you know, excessively optimistic about digital, because digital can be used both ways. Uh, if you look at what's, ha what's happened and what is happening on the dark web, sometimes using some funny devices that borrow from digital technologies, you see some very bad bargaining, uh, bargains and very bad trade taking place. So it's, it, it has to be used efficiently, it has to be used for good, but no technology is going to fix everything unless it is used with a purpose, and that purpose has to be good. We've certainly seen privacy concerns on our page as well about that too. Yeah. <laughs>